All right, so we've got this data here uh, from the Census Bureau. Uh, and it is pretty much exactly the way that I downloaded it. One, one, one small change, I'll show you later. I'd like someone to look at this data and tell me something about it. Give me some meaning behind one of these numbers. I mean, beyond, you know, this is the quantity 863. I, mean, I, know, I know what the number means that way, but what does that mean? Any of this, take a look at it. There's enough information in this workbook for you to figure that out. So take a minute, look at that. What do you see? What can you tell me that's, that's remotely, moderate, that, that could be interesting to someone? Put it that way. So we're going to set a very low threshold here. It doesn't have to be genius. Tell me something about this data that might be interesting to someone. <laughs> Go ahead. Columns like H through L, it, the, the header says age for some reason. Oh, okay. So you're looking at the, at the, the kind of the column header here. Yeah. You said like over here an H. Yeah, or, yeah, just something H. Okay, so you're getting some, you're looking at this and saying, hmm, this probably has something to do with age because it says age in the beginning there. Uh, maybe this one is population, after all, it's census data. So, but, uh, okay, that might be interesting to someone. Let's, let's step it up a notch, something a little bit more. Go ahead. There's lots of data. There's a lot of data. That could be interesting to someone. I'm, I'm okay with that. It's mission accomplished. What else? Okay, so if you're if you're if you're only looking at this tab that we're on, it's going to be hard to get a whole lot more than we've than we've done so far. There are other tabs. Snoop around for me. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a data key on the second tab. Yeah, so tell me something. If, yeah, use the data key on the second tab and tell me something interesting about this data. Tell me what one of these numbers actually means. Tell me what that number means. Looks like 4,661,900. What does it mean? Go ahead. It's the resident total population estimated as of July 1st, 2008. Four. Good. That's what it is. That number is total resident population estimated for July 1st, 2008. But what is it? But, but what area? So, so, so step first half of that is good. That's what the number means. But it's what's that? Alabama. For the whole state of Alabama. How did you figure that out? The third tab. Okay, so using the, the second tab, what we'll see is that we can, we can convert these column headings. So here's PST 045 something, PST 045. That is resident total population estimate for that particular period. And so that's actually everything in this column is a resident population estimate for that particular time period. So then using this first column here, if I look over here on my county names, this third tab, and I find that number 1,000, I can see that that is Alabama, not one of the counties in Alabama, it is the whole state of Alabama. And so that's exactly right. So this particular number is total residential population estimate on that particular date for the whole state of Alabama. And then this is for like Baldwin County here. This is one of the, this is one of the, one of the counties in Alabama. So that's what this data, that's what these data are, is that we say pick a row, and that's a county, and then pick a column, and that is a particular measure. So the intersection is going to be in that county for that measure, that's the number. What do you think? Is this data easy to work with or difficult to work with? Yeah, this is a nightmare to work. These are your federal dollars at work. This is you know, they said, hey, here's some data from the census. You're welcome to download. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, so here's our goal for today. What we're doing, we're covering Chapter 5 today. We're not going to cover it anywhere near all what's in Chapter 5. But we're going to use this as an example to see some of the different things from Chapter 5 and actually do something useful. Here's what my goal is for the end of the, by the time we get to the end of class today. It's for us to have a tool. We've built a tool here that will allow us to easily view the information for one county not only that, but be able to compare two or more counties next to each other in a way that we can look at it and very quickly get the data that we want to use. And we're going to do it by the end of class today. Here's what my hope for you is you're going to say, wow, we turned this workbook that's next to impossible to use into a tool that's really pretty easy to use, and it didn't take that much. But the only thing that we're going to do that's magical is the very first thing. And so let's take a look at that. What we need is we need a way... Well, first let's start, not, okay, it's the second thing. 
First, we're going to make a new worksheet. Okay, new worksheet created. I'm going to call this sheet, I'll call this sheet compare. It gives a chance to be able to compare two different, the data from two different counties. And here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to take the information from my data dictionary, from column two, column B of my data dictionary, and I want to put that, I'm just going to copy that and put it in column one on my compare sheet. So I've copied all the names of these and put them into their same location, but in column A instead of column B. So far, so good? In data dictionary, you should do that tab and wrap the second column, bring it into the first column of our compare sheet. So now, I'd like to have some mechanism that allows the user to pick a county. And when they've picked a county, I want to lay in all the values for that particular county right here. So they can just look at the name of the variable and then see the value for that variable for that particular county. And then I'd like to be able, so that's going to be steps two, three, four, and five. And then step six is going to be to make it so it's not just one county, but we can see multiple counties at once. Okay, so what, what tools do I have, just what Excel tools do I have at my disposal to be able to pick a county name from a list? I want to be able to pick something from a list. Any thoughts? Have you, have you done this in Excel? Oh, VLOOKUP. So VLOOKUP allows me to put in a value and then pull another value that corresponds to that. And so that's not really what I'm after here. I want to be able to have some list that I can choose from. It's going to show all these different counties, and I want to pick one. Pivot to. Or drop down. <laughs> say drop down. What do you mean by drop down? Drop down is more in the direction of what I'm thinking of. What do you think? So invalidate the list. OK, so data validation. Yeah, that's one of the ways that we can do this. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do it, but that's one of the approaches that we could do. We're going to take a different approach. But let's, let's take a look at this one real quick. So here's data validation. It's really kind of a slick thing. So I'm going to come to data over here, and I've got data. You know, my resolution is just enough to make me a little confused here. Data validation is one of these over here somewhere. This one right here. Data validation. Okay, so I'm going to select data validation. It's going to say, okay, great. Here you are in A1. What do you want to put here? You know what? I'm going to encourage you not to do this along with me. Just watch because we're not we're not going to be building our example on this. I'm just going to kind of show you one way, and it's a way we're not going to do, but it's a reasonable approach. So allow any value? No. What kind of data validation is that? Any value. Thank you. It's a valid value. It's any value. It matches the rule. I'm going to choose list. It's got to be on a particular list. Okay, great. What's the source of the list? I'll come over here to my county names, and I will choose, you know, something that we'll do the whole thing if I was really going to do this way. Uh, and then we'll say, okay, that's it. So now, the only thing I'm allowed to type in here is something that's in the list that I've just defined. But, because I'm in this data validation, I can choose this drop-down arrow, and then I can pick it off the list. So that would be a kind of a slick way to say, ah, you'll choose from a particular county. And we can just pick it. Now, in the case of data validation, all that I get, all I have access to is the value that's right here. And so if I want to take this approach, then after the user has made the selection here, I then have to go figure out what is that selection. I would have to come over here back to county names, find that value, and then I could know the identifier that we we're looking at, come back to the data set, find that identifier, and know, aha, that's the value. Which we can automate with VBA without too much trouble. But I'm going to show you a different approach. It actually will look and feel pretty similar. So back to my compare sheet, and I am going to set my data validation back to allow any. Not list, but any value. Okay, so now the list is gone. I can put in there whatever I want. So the other approach that's similar to this, we're going to find on the developer tab. On the developer tab, there's this toolbox. It says insert. And we have, we've used already in class this one. This is the, the command button. We're going to use the next one over now, which is called the combo box. Did I say combo box? Do I have it on there? Yeah, combo box is a form. Folks, there are, there are two different combo boxes. Do not get them confused. Down here under ActiveX controls, there's a combo box. The picture looks the same. Looks can be deceiving. This combo box is good, benevolent, honest, chaste, and virtuous. This one is carnal, evil, sensual, and devilish. Don't choose the Activex combo box. We will 
never talk about this in class. Right. After this. We're going to do things similar. Well, we're going we're to play with some of these kinds of things later in class. They are much more advanced. It's not that they're really evil. It's that they're much more difficult to configure. They're more powerful, and yet more overhead than I want to bite off of today. So we're going to stick with this one, the form control combo. One. So I'm going to click on that, and then I will click and drag to make it the size that it was. So now I've, so, so here's the, one of the differences between using the data validation list and a combo box is that the data validation is actually in a cell. It's controlling what values are allowed to go into that cell. A combo box is another control that sits kind of like in front of the worksheet. And I can put it, I can kind of drag it around, put it wherever I want it to be. I can kind of change the size, move it around. So it's a different, it's, it's actually a control on the form rather than, or control on the sheet rather than something that's manipulating a cell. Once we've created it, we're going to do, we have to do two things to configure. The first one is, and this, they're both under here under format control. So I'm going to right click and choose format control. And the first says, okay, there's an input range. Where does the list for this list box come from? Well, I will select with my insertion point in the input range field up here. I'm going to select my data dictionary, uh, no, my county names sheet. And I'm going to bring in all these county names. Now, I only get one column shown here when this thing is collapsed down. Uh, I could probably conf there might be a way to configure it to show more than columns when it's when it's expanded, but when it collapses, it's only one column. So this is actually the only change I made to this data file we got from the Census Bureau is that I gave us column D here, which took column B and C and put it together. So we're going to use column D. Let's do a Control Shift down arrow highlight that whole column. There are over 3,000 entries here, and that's going to be what goes into the list. Now, the cell link says, listen, after you've chosen a value here, you've got to have somewhere in the worksheet to tell you what value has been selected. And that's what the cell link is. I'm going to put that in A1. So I'll select A1. So it says, listen, you're going to, you're going to build a list off of this range from the county name sheet, and when the user picks one, tell me about it in A1. Drop down lines is like how many, when these things expand, when, the, when, you, when this thing drops down, how many rows is it going to show? Eight is not enough, contrary to the popular television show of the 1970s. We're going to go to, say, 15. Oh, look at this. You can have 3D shading. <laughs> I'm going to skip the 3D shading for now. Say, okay, let's see what this thing looks like. Yeah, that looks very flat, very flat indeed. There's the list, and if I choose one, Maybe I'll go down here somewhere to like you know, Kansas somewhere. Where is where's Kansas? We're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. H I J I J. It may be you know not worth actually going to Kansas for. Aha! There it is, Gov County, Kansas. Ah, oh, that's the county I was named after. <laughs> And actually, why did it put 936 there? Kansas, 936. What's going on here? What's the 936? It is not the row number that the data came from. Well, it's the number in the list. It is the row number the data came from, but that's not what it means. It's the number in the list. So because this list started on row one, whether it's the number in the list or the row number, it's the same thing. But if this list you know, was three items, Started somewhere on rows you know ten through ten through twelve, then it would return numbers one, two, and three for those items, not ten, eleven. Okay. Yeah. You might be getting to this, but if it puts that nine thirty six in A one anyways, what's the point of doing this over a drop down in A one if it's going to put something in A one? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So the question is, hey, you know, we're going to use that data validation. It would put Gov Kansas in A one. Well, the answer is. Our next step would be we got to convert Gov Kansas into 936, but this one does it for us automatically. It's just allowing us to bypass that one step. Uh, because ultimately we're going to have to use this number to figure out where is the data, where's the data coming from. So while we're here, I think I'm just going to go and I just can't resist for a moment to look at that 3D shading. <laughs> it sounds so exciting. Is that 3D shading on? Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Little 3D shading. <laughs> Worth the price of admission. Okay. 
Okay, so now we've got our cells set up. Here's what we'd like to do. We did, this is this is like a one magical thing. I mean, if you hadn't seen this before in Excel, I'd be like, wow, I have no idea. Excel could do that. From here on in, everything that we do is going to be like, yeah, you know, we did something similar to that already in this class. And this is the fifth time we've met. But, you know, in earlier classes, we did something similar. And so let's go ahead and get started. What I would like to do is I would like to have it so that whenever the user makes a different selection here, chooses Graham County, Kansas, bing, as soon as they make that change, I want to pull the data in. That's what we're after. Now, you may remember on our second day of class, we did a macro and then we built a button that would run that macro, put that button there. Well, that one makes sense. You click the button, it's going to run a macro. It turns out that this combo box can trigger a macro when the user makes a change. Do it as well. So that's nice. But before we can do that, we've got to have a macro to run. So let's go, let's go make a macro. Open up my code editor, Alt F11. I thought I resized this text to make it large. Is that larger than it used to be? It's tiny. Editor format 9. Please stay. Oh, it doesn't change. I'm not knowing a way to get this to change for us here, folks. Uh, can you see this? Yeah. Some of you can. Someone said, yes, you're in the back row. I can see it okay. I wish I could make this bigger for you. Why it's gone smaller? I don't know. I was thrilled last time we had it a little bit bigger. So, um, what's that? I can zoom. Um, but that's a kind of a nightmare for me to work with. I'm going to go ahead and work on this size. And when there's things I have to point out, I'll zoom in to, we'll zoom in to take a look at it. Okay, I don't want to be in funk res. I want to make sure that I'm on my project up here. And I will insert a module. And now I have a module inside my census workbook. So this is where I want to be. I'll try to change the size one more time just in case it has to do with actually having in my own being in my own module. Okay, so sub, we'll make this sub, I don't know, show county data. Okay, so step one. What I would like to do over here is get, put right here in D1, I want to put the name of the state that we're talking about. In other words, I want to put whatever is in the appropriate column, column C on the, on the appropriate row. So how am I going to get, how am I going to find the right row? What's the algorithm that's going to give me the right row? I have to start with this, and that is not the right row. Here, let's go to a simpler one. Let's go to like Baldwin, Alabama. So when I say Baldwin, Alabama, my combo box says four. What am I going to do to get to the to actually get Alabama to show right here? And then, incidentally, I'm going to put over here in, in row two, I'm going to put Baldwin. So I'm going to say Alabama Baldwin. Any thoughts? But don't tell me, that, I don't want to know the VBA to do it. I do the algorithm. Tell me, okay, so I've got a four. Where do I look? Row four. Sorry, that was kind of an easy algorithm. Take that number and use it. I was uh, actually thinking of the next step, which is going to be a little bit of an algorithm. Sorry. You know it's like the same number. What's he looking for? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so no problem. I've got that number. I've got to come here and pull Alabama from C, and then i got to pull uh, B. I want to pull Baldwin from B. Okay. So let's do this. Let's start off by zooming in. And 
So I'm going to create a variable. I want to. We're going to need to know which row we're talking about and so I'm going to declare a variable called row. We're going to need row in a couple of different a couple of different settings and so I'm going to start off by saying row is going to be equal to whatever cell we have, whatever value we have there in range A1. So we're going to say, see we're looking at a different way to say A1. This is kind of it's kind of what chapter five is about. It's about looking at different ways to refer to ranges, cells and ranges of cells. So here's a way we haven't seen before. When you want to just have a hard-coded cell in your code that you don't, you're not gonna kind of compose it up to be some string plus some letter, or you're not gonna have a variable involved in it at all. The simplest way to do that is with square brackets and just put the reference right inside. You don't need quotes or anything, A1. That now is a reference to that range. Which worksheet are we talking about? Yeah, whatever the active sheet is. So let me make sure we know what the active sheet is. I'm going to say sheets, compare, dot, active. Okay. So now we're certain that we're talking about the compare sheet. And I'm now talking, I'm going to put into this variable row just a holding place to hold the value until later. And I'm going to look at A1's value. Let's see if the problem while I'm on the little sloped desktop here. If I set my mouse down, it'll scroll this down. It'll scroll automatically. Okay. So now, what I want to do is use this value to bring in the right value on that sheet. So we're going to look in, where are we looking? Right here in B1, I want to put Alabama. And so, another way to refer to a particular cell, we've seen this one before, range, and then in quotes, inside the parentheses, give it the name of the cell. Cell reference. So B1 dot value equals. Now, I got to look at a different sheet. So the sheet that I'm going to look at is sheets. What's it called? County names? County names. Dot cells. Which row do I want? Row number row. Which column do I want? Column three. Which column has a state name in it? It's kind of hard for me to get to one zoomed in. Three. three. Column three. It's County three. names, plural. County names, thank you. All right. So let's go ahead and put in the state name as well, or the uh, county name as well. Give us the state name. So that wants to go into, B, I want that to go into B2, and we'll show, again, we'll see a different way to refer to it, and again, this is what we've seen before. Cells, we give it a row, which row do we want? Row 2, which column do we want? Column B, and of course, we could specify that with an index number for both of them, that's B2, but we have the luxury of specifying a string to say the column, and that's going to be exactly the same thing, except it's going to be column number, one more over column number, Column number two. The county name comes from column two. The state name comes from column two. So far, you know, we don't have any rocket science here. One thing that we've seen new is that we can put a hard coded reference to a cell just by putting it in square brackets. I programmed in VBA for close to two decades before I knew you could do this. I don't know if it was a newer syntax or you just never showed any example I ever looked at. All right, so let's now attach this procedure to the combo box. Right click the combo box, assign macro. We only have one macro, it should be pretty easy to find. And say okay. Now, when I click off of it, then I can choose here, I want to go to Bullock, Alabama, and it's going to bring in Bullock, Alabama. 
somebody else, Claiborne, Crenshaw, looks great. So, so far so good. The easy part is done. Now, we gotta go pull in all the data from our data set for Crenshaw, and we've gotta lay that data right in, right in here. Whew. If you were just doing that in Excel, what would you do? Here's the, let me highlight the data so you can see it. I don't want to do Crenshaw's too far down the list. I want to do Baldwin. So Baldwin data is, let's see, data, county names. That's number one, 1003. Come back to my data set, find 1003. This is the data I have to put in there. So if I had to get all this data off of this sheet from the data set on this row and put it into a column, on my compare sheet, what am I going to do? Copy. I like the copy part. Paste special transpose. Do a transpose paste. Do you have any idea how to do that in VBA? Yeah, you know, I don't know how to do it, but I know the best, next best thing. I'll record myself doing it. Let's give it a shot. So, uh, in fact, no need. It's going to be, the code this will generate is pretty simple. But just as a reminder for this process, let me go ahead and do it. So don't do this with me, but just watch. So I'll call it macro one, it's a great name for it. I'm just gonna copy the active cell. I'm gonna come back here to the compare, uh, compare sheet and I'm gonna paste special transpose and I put the numbers in there. I didn't get them all, but that's okay. We'll get the code to be pretty close. Stop recording, very important stop recording. That read a new module for me, module two. And there it is. And there's a paste, there's a paste special method hmm, for the selection. What did I have selected when I did paste special? What kind of object was selected? Was it a chart? Was it a worksheet? Was it a workbook? What was selected? It was a cell. Yeah, I had a cell selected. And so this in the so in this case, we see the paste special, that you can see it right here, range B3 is select. You selected a ring, a single cell range. So the range object has a method called paste special. Now, out of all of these arguments for it, which one do you suppose is the, is the, is the relevant one? Yeah, it's called transpose is true. So this is, this, I've got four different things that are telling how special, paste special is gonna behave. So are we gonna, what are we gonna paste? Formulas? Are we gonna paste values? Are we gonna paste format? What are we pasting here? And what's the answer to that one? Pacing, oh, that's the default button. We don't really need that print. The operation. Do you guys know what this operation is? You can paste special and you can do an operation. You know what that's talking about? Yeah, this is like the crazy thing. I'm going to have all these numbers and I'm going to paste something over the top of them. Oh, don't just put the values there. Take those values I'm getting ready to paste and like multiply them by whatever's already there. Or subtract them by whatever's really there. I thought that's what a formula was for. It turns out I've never gotten the courage to do that. So I asked in the last class, I said, yeah, it's really handy if you were saying, you know what, I want to scale all this data. You copy a thousand and then you do a paste special across it. And you can say, yeah, paste it by multiplying it. And then you've got, you've changed numbers from whatever it was to a thousand more. You just scale the data. So, oh yeah, I've never wanted to do that, but that would be a reason to do it. <laughs> skip blanks. I never even, I even knew there was a skip blanks. What does skip blanks do? Yes. Presumably, when you paste, if you've got a blank, it goes, yeah, don't paste that in there, just scoot the next one. That could be really handy. I always pasted it there and then sorted it to get rid of the blanks, but okay. Uh, but this one is the one where after transpose equals true. Okay, so I'm going to, um, actually, I'm probably just going to remember that and we'll go type it. So back here in our module one, we're going to start off by copying. So we've got to figure out how to copy the correct range. Did that by hand when we recorded, that was pretty easy. But now we've got to figure out how to copy. So this is going to give us the opportunity to see something very new. It's not terribly new, it's moderately new. It's the range method. Now, but this time, so far, the only way we use the range method is we have said, in quotes, some description of a range. And we could do that here. You know, we could say, all right, what I'm going to need, and sometimes it's, it's, it really is helpful to 
just kind of look at the data and, and get the value that I'm actually after. A5 through, what's the end of this? CE5. So I could come here and I could actually have A5 colon CE5. So one approach that I could take is I could say, all right, I've got to dynamically figure out this string. The A is going to be the same each time. The CE is going to be the same each time, as long as we assume that the amount of data doesn't change. And I've just got to do some string manipulation to concatenate in the 5. Well, how do we get to the 5? How do we figure out 5? Yeah, we've used row here, and the row here is... What is it? So row here is 4, so when we've got a row of 4, our data is on row 5. In fact, it's because there's a header in here. It is the only reason. It's offset by 1. And so we can just do this. Let's do this. Let's come back to our code. And now that we're done using row here, we read row is 4. Let's go ahead and bump row up just a little bit. Row equals row plus 1. So now row is 5. Now we're going to get ready to read the data. We've shifted our row down by 1. And we're ready to read that range. So we can come in here and say row concatenated with that. Whoops. Undo, undo, undo. The A is what says it's the 5. So I'm going to delete that 5. And I'm going to prepare to concatenate into this string. I've got to cut this string into two pieces. I'll do that with putting two quotes in. I've now made, two, two, made that string into two. I'll put in two ampersands. And I'm going to input row right in the middle. So now it's going to have to figure out A and then whatever row we're talking about, and then CE, and that same row. This is one way to do it, to concatenate up a string to mean the reference that I'm after. Go ahead. So we uh, categorize a variable as, as A1, and then we select it uh, two separate ranges of cells, essentially, with those two lines. Is that what you did? I'm not quite following you. Say so, that again. So we, we made that variable there. So here we created a variable, and, and then we put a value into it. We said, look in. Sheet A1, or look in our compare sheet on A1 and take that value, whatever's there, in this case 4, and plug that into this variable for safekeeping. And then what are we, so what are we counting names? What are we selecting here? So here, just, let me just go through this real quick. So what this is saying is that we're going to put a new value, the assignment statement, we're going to put a new value into B1. Which sheet are we talking about here? I haven't told it which sheet, so which sheet is it? Active sheet. Which sheet is active? Yeah, we have code here that says for sure, activate that sheet. So we're talking about range B1 on the compare sheet. Let's take a look at the compare sheet. Let's see, I'm going to do this. Control A. So we're talking about B1 right here. We are trying to put a value. We're looking at whatever was selected here by the user by choosing something off this list. They've given us a 4. We're trying to take that 4 and convert that into Alabama. And also convert that 4 into Baltimore. And so what we're doing is we're saying, put, put a value into B1 on our compare sheet. What's it going to be? Well, we're going to look over here at the county names sheet. Our county names sheet. And we're going to come to row number four. And we're going to choose column number, or column C. And so that's what we said. We said row number four, we just read that. And column number three, incidentally, we could put that. We could put that as column C. That work is. So these lines, this line is saying, for the for the for whatever row is currently relevant to us, figure out which state name we've got from our county name sheet. Plug that into B1. Then figure out which county name we have and plug that into B2. Ah, why do we need a colon here? This one right here? Okay, so here's what we're trying to build up here. 
what I'm trying to do, in fact, let me get on the right sheet. So right now our active sheet is our compare sheet, and I am trying to copy a range of cells off of the, what sheet? Off of our data, our data set sheet. So let me make sure I'm talking about that sheet. Sheets, data set, dot range. Yeah, and so what this is, what we're trying to do with this, I'll put it in a comment right here. We're trying to get something that looks like this, A5 colon CE5. That's the range we're trying to copy. This is one way to dynamically get a multi-cell range. Just say range and then do string manipulation to produce a reference that would refer to that particular range. And from there we can say copy. That's one way. I'm going to show you a different way. This way is actually kind of a nightmare to read. Yeah, it works, but... So here's another one that may be equally difficult to read. But it's a new syntax. I want to show it to you. Range. Now, in parentheses, so far, every other time we've said range, we have given it a single argument. We just gave it an argument right here, one, one string. This has to be evaluated down to a single string value. But here, I'm going to give it two different values. And they are actually going to be references to ranges themselves. Let me show this to you in the immediate window over here. Show you how this works. Go right here to census. Okay, so here I've got the active cell. I'm gonna. I want to get the range that's from the active cell to say D20. So I'm gonna print range. Okay. So range takes two arguments. The first one I'm going to say is the active cell. It really is a reference to a cell. It's not the value of a cell. It's a reference to the cell itself. I'm giving it, a, I'm giving it one corner of the range and the other corner of the range, and it's going to make a rectangular range between those two cells. And then the second one I'm going to put in here is like range D20. Another way to reference a particular range. And I'm going to print the address. Will Ragney, R A N G E. And so that says, and it's, and it's given us this, right? It's going, starts in B3, ends in D20. So here's what I want to do I want to start in, where do I want to start? Well, okay, so let's make sure that I'm on talking about the right sheet. So this is going to be Sheets Data Set, Data Set Sheet. dot cells. The nice thing here is that because I kind of have my row separated from my column in two different chunks, my row is held in a variable, my column is just something else that I've got to keep separate, I can do that with the cells method and say row number, row, column number, one, A. So A5 is row five, column one. <laughs> That's where it starts. Where do I want it to end? Column CE, whatever that is. Now here's the thing. This data set's pretty stable. You know, it's not like next week I'm going to get a new set of data and it's going to have a different number of columns. But that's a pretty common problem to have to deal with. So let's see how to solve it. So I don't want to always end in CE. I want to I want to end in whatever data is the last, wherever the, wherever the data ends here. Now, because I'm really comfortable that I'm not going to have any blank spaces in the names of the variables, I can imagine having some missing data in the data here somewhere. But there's not going to be a missing data in the label. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to start here in B2, and I'm going to do an end move to right, and that will take me to the right column that we're talking about. So, so here, I'm going to start hmm, 
I'm going to start not on row row, but on row one, so A1. This is the second argument to my range method. And you know what, this is going to get too long to fit on the screen. I'm going to split this up and do it in two steps. I'm going to create a variable and we'll put it into the variable first. I'll, I'll call this variable calls, C-O-L-S, the number of columns of data that we have to work with. Before I get here, I'm going to say calls equals that particular, we're starting in A1 of our data set. From there, we're going to say end XL to right. And then we're going to ask for the column that that's in. Let me call it 83. CE is 83. How did you know that, Professor Allen? I just barely caught this lecture like a half hour. We actually looked it up. It was 83. <clears throat> and so now, this multi cell range is going to start on row one. I'm sorry, row, whatever row we're talking about, column one. And it's going to end in row, whatever row we're talking about, column number what? Calls, the one we just figured out. And that we're going to copy. We're going to compare these two lines. I'm going to move the definition of row up above just so it's out of the way. You can leave it right where it was if you like. Which of these two rows is easier to read? First of all, is either of these rows easier to read? Easy to read. They're both fairly difficult to read. And we use them for different things. You know, so let's kind of take your pick as to which one. Is one more efficient than the other? Probably not. And if it is, it's efficient on the level of nanoseconds, not even milliseconds. It's, it's a tiny difference. So on this particular use of the range method, we say give it a starting cell, give it an ending cell. That will then be the range that we're talking about. And then we can execute whatever method we want on that range. I don't want you to type what I'm about to show you because it's wrong. But it's going to be something you're going to want to You'll be tempted to do this in your life. The temptation is to say, listen, all of these cells are on my data set sheet. So instead of prefixing it there, I will say, hey, this is a range on the data set sheet. And I can just say cells on the inside. Well, the reason this doesn't work is that this has to be parsed separately from the rest of this line. Which sheet am I talking about right here? Active sheet. And so <coughs> this just this does not even make any sense to accept. That looks a pretty reasonable thing to, to do for you, but this approach just doesn't work. I've got to identify the sheets I'm talking about on the inside of this. So range without specifying where it is, and then I tell it where it is based on which cells I'm using to define it. Here's another question. Do these two have to be on the same sheet? Or could I have a range that starts on the data sheet, the data set sheet, and ends on the what's our next one called? County name sheet. What do you think? Not a chance. You've got to be on the same sheet. Okay. Either one of these approaches will work. I'm going to leave this one here just because it's the one I have uh, currently. Question. So if you had just activated the sheet before then, you wouldn't have to have any sheets. Oh, yeah. So yeah, here's the other thing. Could I have just activated the data set sheet here, uh, sheets data set dot activate, and then I could get rid of these? The answer is yes, I could have done that. We prefer not to activate sheets unless needed. Because there's kind of no reason to be kind of updating the screen. Actually, it's got to update the screen when we activate. Now, we can tell it, hey, don't activate, don't don't update the screen while we're doing this. Um, and so that would be another way. That would be another approach. That would, that would be an approach that stylistically I don't care for, but it would work just fine. It would probably be as efficient or nearly as efficient. Uh, when we're calling out sheets, it's case sensitive. Is is sheets case sensitive? The answer is no. So this could be, you know, capital T, 
capital S, that'd be okay. So, and the reason is because you can't have two sheets with the same name, even if, even if your case is different. That's the reason. Is there a question over here? No? Okay, so now we've copied it. Now we just have to figure out where we're going to do our little paste special. That's actually pretty easy. What's our active sheet right now? Compare sheet is the active sheet. And that's exactly where we want to put this stuff. It's going to start right here in B3 of my active sheet. So I've done the copy. Now I'm just going to say B3. It's always going to be B3. Dot paste special. Transpose colon equals true. So we're telling you a paste special, and the relevant part of the paste special is we're transposing. Incidentally, folks, there's two ways for us to get to transpose is equal to true. If I just, let me, I've got to get the interpreter to figure out what I'm talking about. Okay, good. So if I just say pay special, the next the first argument it's expecting is this paste type. Well, I'll put a comment there. I don't need that one. Skip blanks. I don't care about skip blanks. Now, do you see how it's highlighted transpose? When I put the right number of commas out there, it's talking about transpose. I can just say true here. Either way allows me to skip those first three parameters. Either by saying, you know what, the name of this parameter is transpose, put a colon equals, and then true, or just, just say I don't care about the first one, I don't care about the second, I don't care about the third one, ha, ah, this is the one that I want to value. So I can refer to those either by their position or by their name. Which one reads better? Transpose. Yeah, the one says transpose, that's what we're going to keep around. I'll keep this in the code just so you can see that as another viable one. <laughs> Folks, we're really getting pretty close. I see a question, but I just can't wait to run this before I ask the question. So I'm going to come back to my code. And let me delete this so we can see it happen. I'm going to choose Barber, Alabama. There it is. Put in all of the values. The barber does end in the right place, ends in the right place. We're feeling pretty good about it. Okay, there's a question. Go ahead. Yeah, what is the... This right here? So what's going on with this sheet right here? So I'm going to use this value columns to figure out where I'm going to copy. So we're making a multi-cell range that's going to say, all right, where does it start? It starts on whatever row we've selected, column one, and it's going to end on whatever row we've selected, column calls. So calls is going to be used to figure out how wide our selection should be. So what we're doing here is we're saying, listen, look at the data set sheet. Don't select it. Don't activate it. Don't go there. Just think about the data set sheet. Then think about A1, row 1, column 1. And then imagine if you were there and you said, control right arrow, what cell would you be referring to? And it's the last cell. It's the cell that we would be on. We started over here on A1 and went control right arrow. This one. And so that's the cell that we've gotten to. And then we've asked for the column number of that. So that's going to be an 83. That's that's what column number that is. So we're just saying, I got I, I want to think about what row I'm copying from and what column the data ends on. And we're going to use those two things to figure out where we're copying the data from. So that'll get us down to the right row. It'll give us the right width. We'll copy that. Then we'll do a paste transpose to put it into the right place. Whew. 
It took us a little while to get here, but at this point, we've now converted this worksheet into something that was unbearable to something that will at least let us look at one county at a time. You know, we can come down and we find Utah County. Find out some interesting stuff about our very county. M-O-P-Q-R-S-T-U. Utah County. And we can scroll down here and find out what our median household income was. Where's the median household income numbers? There it is. Median value. Oh, here's the median home, median home value. Here we go. $156,000 uh, in 2000. Is that the year 2000? That's the year 2000. So let's see, this would be a little bit easier to work with if we froze our panes. Let me free, I'm going to go ahead and freeze panes. You don't have to do this for your example, but this will be a little bit nicer here. So I'm going to select this and choose, I'm on row A3, I've got A3 selected. View, freeze panes, freeze panes. So now I should be able to scroll down, look at those. I'm going to see, ah, here in Utah, we've got those values. And there they are, whatever they are. Total Asian owned farms. There was one Asian-owned farm in Utah in the year 2000. Oh, that's a percent. Totally a percent. One percent of farms in Utah are Asian-owned. Okay. Now, in one sense, we're halfway there. We've got the data for one county. But the name of this sheet is compare. We want to be able to compare two or more. Any thoughts on what it's going to take to be able to do this? What's that? Second combo box. Okay, so here's one approach. We can put two combo boxes. So you select one, and when you select it, it puts it in here and in column. Whoops, what did I just do? I paste it. Uh, another combo box, it puts it here in column C. That's a lot of work because we got to set up a combo box. We've got to do that same thing. And it limits us to just two. We want three. We've got to create another combo box for me. Ugh. I don't like it. Can we just insert a row? Oh. Hey, that's pretty slick. So your thought is, hey, we've got the data from one of them right here. What if the next time we execute this, it just inserts a column here for B, shifts everything over, and then we're ready to lay the next That sounds easy. Let's give it a shot. Uh, turns out you can record yourself inserting a row to see, or inserting a column to see what the data is, but it's really, really easy. I'll just do it. We're going to activate that sheet, and then right after we activate it, let me go ahead and insert that column. So several ways we can refer to a column. Let's look at one. Range, and it's always going to go into column B. We're always going to insert at column B and push over whatever was there. So we could say B colon B dot insert. There's an argument that you can give to insert which says, which way do you want to shift? You're inserting some stuff. Do you want to shift stuff down or do you want to shift it over? And when you're inserting a column, Excel's going to pretty well figure you're not going to shift it down because you're inserting a whole column. for Where would that stuff go if you pushed it down? There's nowhere for it to go. So you don't have to tell it which way to shift. Uh, will that work? Let's get a shot. So we put that line in there. Let's go ahead and bring in Wasatch County. All heck has broken loose. What has happened? Oh. It made it really wide. Why is it so wide? When you insert a column, it says, oh, you probably want this column to be just like the one to the left. That's just the way Excel does it when you insert. No. We don't. How wide do we want it to be? We want it to be just as narrow as possible and show the data. What's the term for that in Excel? Auto fit. Oh, I wish my diet had an auto fit button. <laughs> you are automatically fit. Okay. So let's do this. After we've done all this, we got all the data in here. Let's come down here. Here's another way to refer to that column. Columns. And then I'll just give it an index number. Two. Dot. A-U-T-O-I-T. Auto fit. So now it'll go through all this. So it will kind of push it wide to start with, but then when it's done doing everything, it'll auto fit it and bring it back. This should be just fine. Let's see. 
Let's add in Salt Lake County. Hmm. Still not really thrilled with that. Yeah, it scrolls me over. But now at least it's the right width. We'll do a little more work on that. Questions? We can't search in that. Oh, how come you can't? The question is, why can't you search in the drop-down box? Like, start typing and have it go to the place you're looking for. And the answer to that is, because this combo box don't work that way. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if the, it may be, remember the one I told you that was evil but more capable? It's evil twin. It might, it might work that way. So if you wanted that feature, there may be a way to get it, but it would be over there in that ActiveX combo box. I'm not sure. It seems like there was one that would do that sort of thing. Yeah, this one just doesn't do it. Sorry. Bad news. Okay. Now here's the problem. When I do that insert, it's actually selecting that column. Or maybe it's the paste. It's probably when I'm doing the paste, that it's the paste special that it's selecting that column. And so here's what I'd like to do. I would like to say, no, don't. You know, after you paste, I need to remember which row you're on. Because let's suppose this. Let's suppose what I'm interested in is I'm interested in knowing how many deaths occurred in 2006. So I've scrolled myself down here to how many deaths occurred in 2006. And now I want to insert, I want to see another county. I want to add Tooele County in here. What I really want is for Tooele County to pop in here, these to shift over, and for this line to stay selected. I would really like that. That would be nice. But what happens? What happens? Well, I hit Tooele, and what happened? It's gone. I can't see anything. Something else is highlighted. I go to scroll back down. How many of you would be annoyed if you had to work with this? And that's what the way it did. Yeah, you know what that is. So let's take a look at how we might be able to say, remember what was selected, and then just after we did everything else, let's select it again. Let's take a look. I'm going to declare another variable for this. Dim hmm, selection address. I'm just going to remember the address of the selected area. Then I'm going to come to, right after we activate the sheet, and I'm going to remember the address of the selected area. That variable is going to equal selection dot address. I'm saying, listen, look, give me the address property of the selection of whatever object, whatever range is selected. Well, give me some address. I want to hold that in a variable so I can stick it for a little while and bring it back later. And then when I'm all done doing all this stuff, I'm going to come back here and now say range selection address dot what? Select. Reselect it. I just, you told me what the address was and what you had selected. I'm going to remember it, and then I'm going to use that to select that range again. It may not put me in exactly the same place because that selection is going to have, it'll, be, it'll scroll, it'll have to scroll to somewhere, but at least it will highlight what was highlighted before. Let's give it a shot. Let's add in Wayne County, Utah. You know from Wayne County? Wayne County, Utah, being hopped in Wayne County, and left us selected. Addison, Vermont. Looks like they had more deaths in Addison than they did in Wayne. By a lot. Oh, that's the absolute number. So that would be, you want some percent if you're going to compare it to the Percent of foreign born. It's like Salt Lake's a little more diverse than Addison, Vermont. Addison is more diverse than Maine County. Okay, last thing I'd like to do today. Actually, okay, so now we have built the tool the way I envisioned it. It is now pretty useful. I can. I can select whatever counties I want, set them side by side, and I can see the data. They're, they're, it's really comparable. 
is this worksheet, this workbook now dramatically easier to work with? Oh yeah, it's crazy easier to work with. Now let's look at the data, overall data. What did it take? Move it at the, macro, the, the procedure that we wrote. Was this a lot of code to write? It's not too bad. And is there any rocket science here? Well, there's some things we hadn't seen before, but we look at this going, yeah, that was all pretty simple stuff. So that's, that's the good news here. Once we learn some of these simple tools, we can really improve our workflow in a big way. Here's the next thing, and it's really just because we've got like eight minutes, I'd be happy to stop there, but it'd be nice if there was a way for me to delete, kind of delete all of this data. So we're gonna, we're gonna create a button that will allow us just to clear, I'm gonna add some raw and then clear. It's not too bad to highlight it, you know, plus control minus. Well, let's go ahead and do that. So one more. Sub procedure. This will be quick. Sub clear data. All right, again, we're going to make sure that we've got our compare sheet active. We'll start off by making sure the active sheet is, is the compare sheet is active. And now I want to start, we're going to do a multi cell range. We're going to start in B1. Let me just check over here. Make sure we're talking. About yeah, B1. I want to start right there in B1. I've got to think about this. Some of these only have one word. Hold on for a second. County names. So the county name is always there. The state name might not be there. So we want to look at the county, we want to do this in the county names. So compare, the county name is in two. Okay, so we're gonna look at, we're gonna start in B2. So B2, that's gonna be our first cell. And then we're gonna, we're gonna say, all right, multi-cell range, start with one cell, refer to the other cell. Then we're gonna say, well, if you were on B2, and you did an N, XL to right. This is going to refer to this is going to refer to a particular range. What's that range going to look like? How many rows will this range have in it? One row. How many columns? It depends on what the data looks like. If there's one column there, how many? If there's only one column of data, what's it going to? How many columns will it have? That's a trick question. It'd be a great question for an exam. I should do that. If I did end XL to right, what cell am I talking about? Control right arrow. It's the very last one. So if I only have one, if I only have one column of data here, and I do XL to right, it's going to pull. Up, it's going to be one really wide. What's the one row deep? But lots of columns. I'm getting ready to delete all the columns with that. Am I okay with that? Yeah, what the heck? I mean, it's a lot to delete, but what do I care? It doesn't take very long. And so, but if there's more, if there's only two, it'll just be those two that we're dealing with. I think this is going to be okay. So, I, if I just delete that range, it's going to say, well, great, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to shift the cells up or do you want me to shift the cells in? I don't want, I want to delete the whole column. Well, how do I get from a range that looks like this to all the columns that pertain to that? This is where we'll find out if you did the reading. Dot entire column. I can take any range and say, whatever range that is, I want to refer to the whole column for that whole range. It's big. And then from there, I'm going to say delete. That one was pretty easy to write. So now I'll, I'll create a delete button. I'll attach it to this macro. And we're done uncharacteristically, a few minutes early. So I'm going to bring a button on, back to my developer tab. Bring in the first little button here. First, very first one under form controls. I will drag it in there. It'll say, what macro do you want to run? I want to run clear data. It's going to let me change what's, that's kind of neat. I'm deleting that, but it's still showing. I hope it goes away when I hit enter. Uh, clear. 
So now clear, should clear that off. Should be able to bring on a few more. There they are, do whatever comparison I want, hit clear. Bring on some more, I'm so happy. This is the state of Virginia compared to Amherst and Bedford counties. Hey, okay, that's pretty good. That's meaningful too, I mean it's, the state of Virginia is gonna have a lot more, but now that kind of lets me see that kind of difference. Folks, what do you think? What if I wanted to say, put another button here that says chart, and it would automatically build a chart of whatever row I was on, for whatever data I had here, it would just put up a chart. Hard or easy? Harder than what we've done so far. But folks, when we get to the part where we're talking about working with charts, that's exactly what we're gonna do. It's really, really powerful. Let's see this visually. We could even make it so that just the fact that you change to a different line, it will generate the chart for that line. Chart, 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 chart. Either replacing the old chart or making, you know, making multiple charts. All right, folks, any questions here? We have homework due when? Tonight. And project due when? Let's see, how many of you finished the project already? How many of you are going, it's not due till Wednesday, come on. We started yet, okay. Don't wait too long to get that started. You want to spend some time. With, you might want to spend some time with the TAs. All right. Thanks for coming, folks. Class dismissed. Thank you. You're too kind. <laughs>